Let me set the scene for you. Jesus has just died three days ago. He was just hung on the cross. He was crucified and he died three days ago. Then Jesus rises from the dead and he walks six miles. But during this, there is a story that takes place in Luke. We're going to be reading in Luke 24, chapter 24, and we're going to be looking at really just verse 27. Here is the kind of the setting of the story. Jesus just rises and he's talking to these two guys as he, they walk and travel together. Uh, there's these two Jews on the road, and Jesus starts talking to them. And this is what it says in verse 27. It says, Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Jesus right here, after the resurrection, he sees these two guys on the road, and they walk and they talk together. And to these two guys, he reveals to them everything, starting with Moses, everything concerning himself in all of Scripture. So to say that Jesus is not in the Old Testament would be to contradict the Lord Jesus Christ himself because he's explaining to these two guys immediately after the resurrection all the things concerning himself in the Old Testament. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Is Jesus in the Old Testament? And I'm going to be sharing with you four instances where Jesus is physically in the Old Testament. First of all, though, I want to welcome you to the YouTube channel. This is the With God YouTube channel, which is centered around helping Christians solidify a worldview and just to view all things, whether they align with God or not, and to always stand with God on issues and topics and things like that and to stand with his word. And so today, that's what we're going to be talking about as far as the Old Testament goes is, is Jesus in the Old Testament? And he was. And I want to encourage you to don't let anyone tell you anything different. The Old Testament, when you read the Old Testament as a big arrow sign that points to Jesus, it makes the Old Testament that much more interesting. We're going to be reading four examples of when Jesus is physically in the Old Testament. I would like to share with you this book that I have here on the table, and that is called Jesus Unmasked. It's by Christian author and radio host, talk show host, Todd Friel. Uh, I picked it up because it is a topic that heavily, heavily interests me, and that is Jesus appearing in the Old Testament. Why is it important to believe that Jesus was in the Old Testament and that the Old Testament foreshadows and has types of Jesus in it? Well, it's because that is proof that the Bible is axiomatic. What do I mean by that? Here's an excerpt from the book. It says, because the Bible was written over the course of 1,500 years by 40 different men, we should see complete chaos and disagreement. How many, how many people know it's hard to get 40 people to agree on something? We should see chaos. Instead, we see a theme that is consistent and unmistakable. The theme is Jesus. So the Bible has 40 different men who wrote it over a course of 1,500 years. And of course, each book of the Bible has two authors. It has the person who did the writing and it has God himself because these words were given to man by God. And that's the point of this book, is that if Jesus is without a doubt the theme and is pointed to throughout all of Scripture, up until his incarnation and everything like that, uh, uh, birth, life, death, resurrection, if all of Scripture, even the Old Testament, points to Jesus, if there's that common theme that we need a Messiah, we need a Savior to save us, then how could it not be axiomatic and self-proving? Because the fact that it is so consistent in that theme would prove that the Bible is the Word of God, that it had divine intervention in order to make every book possible so that it could stay on that theme. Because it's hard to get 40 people to agree on anything, let alone people who never really got to talk to each other, some of them, and for that to stay consistent all throughout time. Uh, although some authors of the Bible would, of course, have known each other. So anyways, this book is called Jesus Unmasked. The four things we're going to talk about today actually don't come from this book. Uh, these are actually just parts in Scripture we're going to be talking about, but this book goes through a ton of typology and shadows of Christ in the Old Testament. I highly recommend you get it. It's one of my favorite topics to look at is how often Jesus appears in the Old Testament and how the Old Testament serves as a kind of a roadmap uh, to Jesus, and it predicts a lot of stuff in there. It's really, really cool. I advise this book. It's a short read. I don't know. It's like 300 pages or something like that, so it's pretty short. Let's go ahead and jump into our topic officially, four times Jesus appears in the Old Testament. If you're wondering how we know this is Jesus in the Old Testament, as we look at our first one here, the Apostle Paul puts it really plainly. He says it in Colossians chapter 1, Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. Jesus Christ is the one who makes the invisible visible. So our first appearance of Jesus is going to be in the garden, way back in the garden, which Jesus actually tells us in Scripture. He was with God at the creation of the world. Uh, because he is God. Uh, so first appearance of him is in Genesis. It's chapter three, verses eight out of the New King James Version. It says, and they heard the sound 
of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. So Jesus here, God, is walking through the garden. They can hear the audible sound of footsteps in the garden, which we would lead to believe is Jesus because he is a physical appearance of God with a body. You can hear his footsteps. So God, the seen version of God is Jesus. So let's go ahead and move on to appearance number two, which is going to be when Jesus appears to Abraham. The story is that three men appear to Abraham and this is where they predict that Abraham and his wife will have a child. They are both old in years, so this should be pretty much impossible to them at this point, but with God, all things are possible. He shows up and he says, this time next year, you will have a child. And this is what happens, or this is what it says here, and it's in Genesis chapter 18. It says, then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? So he predicts this, the Lord predicts this. We don't know it's the Lord at that point in the story. But he says, hey, you'll have a child next year. She kind of giggles because it seems impossible. It sounds impossible because she is so up in years. But the Lord said to Abraham, a physical person sitting there, the Lord heard this, saw this, spoke to Abraham and said, why did she laugh? And the story goes on, but that's our first point there to prove that that is Jesus talking to Abraham. It's physically God sitting there. Now let's go ahead and look at point number three, the appearance to Jacob. So this story happens in Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 through 31. Jacob wrestles with a man and he wrestles all night and Jacob refuses to let the man go unless the man will bless him. Well, at the end of this wrestling match, it is revealed that the man was God. It's revealed to Jacob that this man was God. And this is what it says. It says, I saw God face face to face, and yet my life was spared. He saw God face to face. The image of the invisible God is who? According to Paul, Jesus Christ. That is our third appearance of Jesus in the Old Testament. Now we're going to move on to my favorite appearance of Jesus in the Old Testament, the fourth one here, and it's Jesus appearing to Joshua. I believe there's the most evidence out of the ones we've looked at so far to prove that this is indeed Jesus. Let's go ahead and read it. It's in the book of Joshua. It says here in verse 13, when Joshua was by Jericho, he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, a man was standing before him with his drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, are you for us or are you for our adversaries? And he said, no, but I am the commander of the army of the Lord. Now I have come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and he worshiped. And he said to him, what does my Lord say to the servant? And the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, take off your sandals from your feet for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. All right, let's look at some particular parts of the scripture. First of all, Joshua sees this guy standing there as a man. He's described as a man. The interesting thing is that Joshua starts bowing down and worshiping to him because he says, I am the commander of the army of the Lord. So he's the commander of the angel armies of the Lord. And Joshua fell to the earth and he began to worship. To worship anyone or anything other than God is a sin. You shall have no other God before me. Joshua knows this. The Ten Commandments have already been given to the Israelites at this time because this is after Moses. The final proof we see here of the text is that the angel of the Lord, which is Jesus, accepts the worship from Joshua, but then he also says you need to elevate it. He says to Joshua, take off your sandals because the ground you're standing on is holy because I'm standing here because I am the Lord. I am God. I'm Jesus. So this is Jesus here appearing to Joshua in the Old Testament. There's a lot of other instances in the Old Testament where Jesus appears, and the only way you're going to know it is if you read the Old Testament. So as you're doing your Old Testament reading, be looking out for Jesus in the Old Testament and be looking out for types and signs, shadows of Christ before his incarnation. And if you want a book that will help you, again, remember that book I told you about, Jesus Unmasked, is a great one to get. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. I think they have an ebook version. I don't know if they have an audiobook version for it or not, uh, but it is a good read. It's a light read. It's easy to read. It's, I don't know, 300 something pages. It's pretty, pretty quick to go through. 
But it's definitely one that I marked and highlighted up a lot because it points to Christ. It shows all of the instances with scripture references in the Old Testament that point to Christ, which again proves that the Bible is axiomatic. That's why it's important for us to know about Jesus in the Old Testament because it proves that the Bible is self-evident. It's self-proving because there's just, there's no way humankind over the course of 1,500 years and roughly 40 different authors could have kept a consistent theme. There's just no way, especially with the majority of the authors never getting to talk to each other. There are a few overlaps where some knew each other, of course. Joshua knew Moses, so on and so forth. But the majority of them, like Isaiah never knew Moses personally and, and so on and so forth. And so there's just a lot of foreshadowing that happens there and it all points to Jesus. It's really, really, really cool as you're reading it and it unfolds. It's my favorite topic if you want to know another cool word, those are called Christophanies. In the Old Testament, when Jesus appears, those are called Christophanies. It's my favorite, like my personal favorite Bible study topic, uh, because again, I believe it proves that the God of wor the Word of God was given to us by God, and that it is true, and that it is able to self-authenticate and prove itself. Uh, anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I want to thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. If you liked the video, make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell notification icon. And if you like it, go ahead and hit the like button. Also, I want to encourage you to go ahead and comment. Apparently it helps with the YouTube algorithm machine so that this video will get recommended because maybe there's somebody out there who doesn't know Jesus appears in the Old Testament. And now if you know it, then you're gonna be excited to go read the Old Testament to see where he appears. And that's the only way you're gonna know is if you go read the Old Testament and you see all the different ways Jesus appears. Again, guys, that's it for this video. I wanna thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.